The damage is widespread. Sandra Torres is in Chicago taking a look at damage in the city. Let's go live to her now. Where are you, Sandra? Hey there, Kate. So we are in the Illinois Medical District right off of Polk Street near Ashland Avenue. And you can see behind me this massive tree that fell here on Polk Street and it's now blocking the street. Folks are driving up, not realizing that this tree is blocking it and then having to turn around. It landed on one specific vehicle across the street here, but others were impacted as well. Just a few scratches, though, it seems nothing major on this side, but you can just see from this angle just how large this tree is. And talking to folks who live in the area, we came across this man who said, oh, that's my girlfriend's car. She nearly or the tree nearly missed it. Uh, but here's what he had to say. Waking up, I thought it was, you know, just going to be a little bit wet, but coming out of here, I was just going to run down Ashland here until I saw this tree covering the entire street and the first thing I thought was holy cow I hope the car is okay so um, looks like I got lucky uh, it's my girlfriend's car but um, doesn't look like it's gotten any scratches just some leaves on it well, they got lucky, but another vehicle did not. You can see this other vehicle where the tree literally smashed it right on top. The tree's root plate torn completely from the soil, likely due to those strong winds last night, buckling the concrete sidewalk as well. And it's not just here where we're seeing this kind of damage. In Norwich, uh, our photographer Rick Stuckey also came across a large tree that fell on top of a house on Maple and Thatcher. And he tells us that just driving through that neighborhood, you can see tree debris all over it, giving us a sense of how strong those winds were last night. Now, back here live, as you look at this enormous tree that's blocking the street, people are waking up and they tell us, you know, that we did not expect to see this. They already went through that first round of storms a few days ago or and they said you know we really didn't think it was going to be this bad and then walk waking up and seeing this it's certainly uh, quite the scene uh, we have not met the owner of the vehicle that is completely smashed uh, because of the tree here across the street uh, but we're sure they're going to wake up to it very soon we're going to send it now to Patrick Fazio he is in Joliet also following some of the damage there Patrick what can you tell us Hey, good morning, Sandra. Yeah, we were in Joliet earlier showing you some of the damage and the trees knocked down, the power lines and power poles knocked down, knocking out electricity and traffic lights have been out uh, throughout the night there. Power is still out. We just moved to uh, Shorewood nearby, just west of Joliet. To this neighborhood, they do ha actually have power because their power lines are underground, but take a look at some of the damage here. From this house here, a tree busted into their roof there, and they also have damage on the backside as well, and you see the trees throughout this neighborhood here on Canterbury Street. This other house right here, tree split in half and banged into their roof as well. As you look down the street, more damage to these houses, but the worst one so far this morning, this house right here, a tree fell onto the back of it, opening up the roof. You can kind of tell from the street here how, uh, how much damage is just at least to the roof, but we uh, heard from a, another neighbor who said that it's basically opened up on that backside when this storm came through last night. They heard yet yelling and screaming from the the neighbors that live inside so they called 911 to get them help but they were not able to get over to their the house because the street was blocked with all these trees and from the video you see of overnight crews came out pretty quickly after the storms hit to start clearing the street but the ambulance had to go to the back side of the the other uh, street behind this uh, house that was worst hit so that they could get the uh, the people inside the house out and take him to the hospital and neighbors talked about the storms overnight take a listen the yeah, our fence is down we have a large gazebo in the back and that was lifted up and moved um so yeah I, i'm, I'm pretty it's sure 600 pounds it was so. some sort of it was a tornado of some sort yeah it sure. had to be a, it had to be a tornado and unfortunately our, our neighbors across the street um they have a yeah. tree they have a tree in the back of their house so yeah praying for them it is that that's bad Yeah, so those are the neighbors that uh, people here on this street are worried about. Those are the neighbors who had to go to the hospital after that tree fell into their house. This right here. So we're waiting to find out more to see exactly uh, how bad injuries were. 
Uh, we have not heard of any fatalities at this point from the storms that came through, but we do know a lot of traffic lights are out throughout Joliet, uh, Shorewood here as well, where we are now. And ComEd says uh, about 220,000 customers are still without power. That has improved throughout the uh, overnight, but it's going to take a while mm -hmm. to get almost a quarter million customers back online with electricity after these storms last night. Meanwhile, thousands of homes are without power as well right now. ComEd says the storm knocked out power to more than 400,000 customers at the peak of the storm. Base camps are being set up with additional resources in some of the hardest hit areas, including Joliet, Streeter, University Park, and Freeport. More than 3,000 utility workers are working around the clock to restore power, prioritizing police and fire stations, nursing homes, and hospitals. We are putting every available resource and team member into this response. We have called in mutual assistance from all neighboring utility partners across the nation, including Canada. Power has already been restored for about 200,000 homes. ComEd says about 80% of customers can expect their power to be restored by late tomorrow. The remaining outages could be restored by Friday night. The village of Shorewood in Will County was hit very hard by the storms last night. Take a look here at tree branches and debris littering yards, some of it even up on the roof. Several homes were damaged in this neighborhood and we're told there were a few injuries as well. Neighbors we talked to today say that storm sounded like a freight train coming through, pulling several large trees right out of the ground. To the east in Cedar Lake, Indiana, this neighborhood was also hit hard. This warehouse lost its roof. We saw workers making repairs already today. And in a neighborhood, a woman was killed when this tree fell on her house. We will have much more on that story coming up at 430 this afternoon, but we want to take a look at the large survey that's being done for all the damage. The National Weather Service already confirmed at least five tornadoes from last night, and they're still out in the area. NBC 5's Christian Farr has more on the cleanup from Northwest Suburban Schiller Park. Cleanup has begun after severe storms once again passed through the Chicago area last night. This is the first time I'm seeing everything. It's just, it's, it's really bad. I, I, I didn't get any sleep last night. Um, I, there was no, there's still no power. Andrew Ayala and his family rushed to the basement of their Schiller Park apartment building when they heard warnings about tornadoes possibly touching down. It's from the windows, you can see the, the wind. Everything was hitting it, and it was just a crazy night. The National Weather Service sent out survey teams today to see how many tornadoes might have touched down last night in the Chicago area. A team in Shanahan has already confirmed that an EF1 tornado touched down near the far southwest suburban village. Back in the northwest suburbs. As the wind progressed, it was pretty, pretty big winds. I, don't, I saw a couple things saying like, you know, 65 to 70 mile an hour wind gusts. Northwest suburban resident Philip Richardson and his family spent part of the day clearing their front yard of several fallen branches. The Texas native grew up with his fair share of tornado warnings. Richardson says he is happy that his family was not injured, and he is also glad that his home was not damaged. It's all over the, the Metroplex in Dallas, so uh, it's a little interesting to have it uh, still impact us all the way up here, but, you know, weather's changing, so. Mm -hmm. Feeling lucky? I do. Feel really lucky, feel grateful. The National Weather Service says that it's sending teams to check out 30 different areas in the Chicago area to see if tornadoes did touch down. It was pretty scary for the most part. Yeah, I'm just glad everyone's okay. In the northwest suburbs, Christian Farr, NBC5 News.